proceeding on to cyclobutane, uh, not much better than cyclopropane with only three carbons. Here we can see that now we don't have to put all of the atoms in the same plane. So even though we draw it sometimes like a box, in real life cyclobutane is going to tend to have a puckered ring. That's what we call this when all the carbons in the ring are not in the same plane. Um, by doing that, uh, that means that not all of the bonds have to have exactly 90 degree angles, so that relieves some angle strain. But uh, cyclobutane is also trying to relieve a little bit of what would be a lot of eclipsing of bonds. And so you can see from the stick figure at the top, we get some staggering of uh, some of those carbon-hydrogen bonds so that they're not eclipsed as they would be if all of those carbons were in the same plane. So cyclobutane tends to uh, have this puckered conformation to, to relieve some of that torsional strain, some of that eclipsing strain. But still the bond angles are not really close to 109 degrees. For cyclopentane here, uh, the situation is improved. If we put all the carbons in the same plane, that gives you about 108 degrees for the bond angles there in the ring, and so that's good. But the problem with the planar version of this molecule is that all of the bonds are still staggered as you work your way around the ring. Um, excuse me, all the bonds are eclipsed. Eclipsing bonds are not good. So uh, if we get a little bit of puckering of the ring here, what's called the envelope conformation, I guess uh, poking up here on the right side would be the part of the envelope that's the flap. And uh, by taking that carbon out of the plane, from the rest of them, it relieves that torsional strain. It takes some of the bonds that were eclipsing and makes them more close to being staggered. If we twist that ring even more, we can relieve even more of that torsional strain. And so this thing called a half chair here, uh, well, it has the effect of making for a lot of staggered bonds. And it doesn't look much like a chair uh, or a half chair, but it's related to a conformation that the six carbon ring uh, does have. And so that's kind of where we're headed here. And we're going to spend a good bit of time dealing with the six carbon situation because the six carbon ring turns out to be the most stable, which is probably why it's the most common ring size in the world of organic chemistry. And those carbons are definitely not going to be coplanar. What you have here is called the chair conformation. I guess it's more like a lounge chair. Maybe this carbon here is the uh, headrest and your feet are dangling off the opposite end. So I guess maybe it looks like a lounge chair. But what this conformation has going for it is that all the bond angles, 111 degrees, very close to tetrahedral, but just as importantly, all the bonds are staggered. There's no eclipse bonds anywhere around that ring. This space filling model shows us in real life how close all of these atoms are. You really can't make out much of a chair here on the right hand side. But uh, remember that these lines we draw between the atoms are to help us know what's connected to what other atoms. But in real life, these things are all bunched up. And that's why uh, these differences in conformations uh, matter. Because these atoms are really feeling each other's presence. And they like to have their space just like us humans do sometimes. And for a six-membered ring, this so-called chair conformation uh, relieves a lot of the strain that these atoms would otherwise be feeling. On paper, we want to be able to draw chair conformations. So you're going to have to practice this a little bit. There is a uh, another file here alongside these overview files for the uh, slides that talks about the ring flipping of cyclohexane uh, chair conformations and is a good uh, example to have um, because it's not only important to draw a reasonable looking chair conformation but also to be able to indicate the bond angles for these carbon hydrogen bonds and this distinguishes what are two types of bonds on that six-membered ring talk more about those in the next segment